They took everything from me. Then they put me in this hole. So I could sit and think all day long about what I'd lost. My freedom, my wife, even my pride. It was hard to know which one I missed the most. Sometimes when I'm locked up, I swore I heard the man with the plane coming back to get me. But none of it was real. It was just my head going to mush. But then, one day, I had a visitor. And that's when everything changed. He said his name was Calypso. He ran some kind of weird contest, and he was looking for people like me to be a part of it. He told me if I won, I could have the one thing my heart desired. I may be no rocket scientist, but I know opportunity when I see it. That pilot had taken a piece of my life and twisted it all around. How could I refuse the chance for revenge? When I passed out in my truck, I dreamed about the farm. I guess I must have been thinking back to the day when everything went wrong. I remember it so well. We was two weeks from harvest. I was checking out the crop when I heard this noise up in the air. There were no dust in schedule that afternoon. I hollered for the guy to stop, but it just kept coming. I didn't know what was happening first. I couldn't breathe, and my heart was beating so fast, thank the Lord, I passed out real quick. I thought I was dead. I must have been out for hours, and when I woke up, well, my God, what had happened to me? My first thought was to get home to Annie. She was real smart. She'd figure out what to do. But when I got there, I guess she'd already figured out something else. I heard them laughing, talking about how they'd go the next week, try to collect the life insurance. Everything hurt. My face, my mind, my heart. I remember grabbing for the closest thing I could find. I just lost it. I'd hunt that pilot down sooner or later. But for now, it was strictly between me and Anne. I've been hitting Annie's body for well over an hour. You couldn't even tell who she was no more. There's a man out there who took my wife and turned me into a freak. When I win this contest, he's going to pay for what he done. I'd won the contest, and now it was my turn to collect. I went to see Calypso, and just as promised, he delivered the goods. I knew right from the start, he'd get me the revenge I was craving. When we went back to the farm, Calypso said he had a little surprise for me. Somehow, he'd done it. He'd found that bastard who made me kill Annie. Son of a bitch even brought his plane with him. 
Calypso said all I had to do to get my prize was step aboard. It was a one-way ticket to my heart's desire. That pilot had taken everything from me. It was right time he learned how it felt. It may have been only the second time I killed someone, but it felt so damn good. I think I was beginning to see my true calling, so I done gave up farming and moved into the city. In a place like that, well, who knows what kind of trouble an old redneck like me could get into. The Lord does work in mysterious ways. He giveth and he taketh away. So it was with my freedom. In my years alone, in that dark place, I would often hear a voice calling to me from within. You are my chosen one, Jebediah. You are my child, here to do my bidding. Truly, I believe there would be no escape from the demon inside me. I wasn't even a real preacher. I was an evangelist, rejected by the church. I didn't have the strength to fight the demon alone, but one day I was given a chance for salvation. His name was Calypso. He came to me with a proposition. If I won his contest, he would reveal the truth. It had been two years since the beast had entered my mind, controlling my actions making others believe I was responsible for those killings. But now I had a second chance. I accepted the offer willingly. All I had to do was win, and a path back into the light would be opened unto me. It is wondrous indeed how his mind will find shelter in memories of the past. I thought back to that fateful night. I had been approached by a young couple who brought to me their child. I was to perform one of my most important duties, an exorcism. But the beast was too powerful, even as I ministered to the child. The demon brought its foul influence upon me and entered my mind. My soul was trapped. All I could do was cry out inside as I tore that church apart. The demon's hatred raged all around, killing everyone in the church. Countless millions of years, it had been hounded by the warriors of God. And now, it was going to make me pay. And then, the creature abandoned me, right when I needed it the most. Get your hands in the air! Do it! Do it now! Every waking hour since, I've feared the demon. But now I have a second chance. When I win this contest, I know the Lord will welcome me back with open eyes. Calypso. It was time for him to prove my innocence and clear my name. And yet, he seemed hesitant. 
I made no promise to clear your name, he said. I only promised to show you the truth. And the truth, he said, was that the demon wasn't real. The voice inside me was a figment of my imagination. My God, it was all in my mind. The exorcism? It wasn't an exorcism at all. It was simply a baptism. It was judgment day in that church, and I was the angel of death. The truth had been delivered indeed, but not by God, but by Calypso. He was right. I was, as they say, insane. My whole life I'd been trying to silence that voice. I even performed rituals to show my loyalty to God in hopes that he would save me. But nothing worked. A man cannot hide from himself. There is only one path before me. I'd been locked away. Not a day went by I didn't pray to God. But I knew even he wouldn't forgive me for what I'd done. See, God only has time for those who deserve his mercy. I just didn't qualify. But then one day I had this visitor. I knew Calypso by reputation. You don't spend 10 years on the force without knowing every dirt bag in Midtown. Seems he wanted me in his contest. He said if I won, he'd ease my pain. My God, he knew. How could he have known? Calypso said if I won the game, I'd get a chance to undo the big mistake was eating at my soul. Redemption. That's a big thing to offer a man without a hope in hell. How can I refuse? As I drifted away, the torment began again. The same torment I'd endured a thousand nights and days before. I began to remember. It happened a couple of years back. We were out across from the North Side Apartments. There'd been reports of terrorist activity in the building. When we got there, we found some kind of doomsday cult had set up shop inside. We were sent there to take them out. These guys were real psychos, desperate as hell, holed up like rats in a cage. But now their little hideaway was a kill zone, and I had them right in my sights. I'd dealt with a lot of dirt bags before, but for some reason, this was different. All units open fire! Open fire! Shoot the kill! All these years, trying to make a difference, and for what? so that we could arrest these scum suckers and watch them walk free the same afternoon? My rage got the better of me. I couldn't focus. I wanted to send these killers to hell where they belonged. I got them. But not before I made the biggest mistake of my life. I'd let my emotions cloud my judgment. It cost me but it cost someone else even more. Oh my God, what had I done? Those people were dead and it was all my fault. There was only one way out, but that way was closed. I was going to have to live with it for the rest of my life and nothing I could do would ever take away the pain. 
Until now. You're in violation of Midtown City Code 4432. Step out of your vehicle and surrender peacefully. Time's up. won the contest. Now it was time to see if the rumors were true. Did Calypso really have the power to give me a second chance? He asked if I really wanted a second chance. If I understood the risks. But I wasn't going to screw up twice. This time, it was all going to work out. I demanded my prize. And just like that, I was back. I knew what to do this time. I had to contain my anger. I had to focus. That little girl was going to be safe. It was my sworn duty, both to her and to myself. He's drawing a weapon. All units open fire. Open fire. Shoot to kill. I made sure every single bullet found the right target this time. That dirt bag went down like a puppet with a strings cut. Terrorist is down. Terrorist is down. Great shooting agent. But it wasn't over. Not until I knew those people were safe. They were shaken but alive. Calypso had done it. I never thought it could be like... Target is not down. Target is still hot. I was so close to making it right. Agent! Agent Stone, report in! Are you hit? In here, you lose track of time. Hours melt into days. Days turn into years. Thirty years, in my case. After so much time in solitary, I should have been getting better. But in my heart, I always knew there was no cure for what happened to me. But I kept on hoping. I knew if I waited long enough, I'd get revenge against the man who destroyed my mind. But I could only wait so long. Every day, the visions got worse. Soon I wouldn't be able to tell reality from my nightmares. But then, my life changed. He called himself Calypso. He said he ran a contest. Winner take all. In my case, first prize meant getting even with the man who stole my sanity. How could I refuse? I agreed to play. into some stinking hole, 25 feet below the ground. Benny was in bad shape. I didn't know how long he was gonna hold out. 
Seems like forever I was screaming for someone to come and help him. Then one day, we had a visitor. The guy was an advisor to the Vietnamese. And he had his own unique idea of torture. Starvation. Then he was on his last legs, and I wasn't far behind. Five days without any food will bring any man to the edge. And the advisor said the only way I was going to survive was to eat. He gave me a knife and started laughing. He said if I wanted food, I'd have to make do with whatever I could find in the hole. I tried to block out what was happening. I knew what he wanted me to do, but there was no way I was going to give him the satisfaction. Benny died two days later. I couldn't look at him. I didn't even want to think about it. It's amazing the things you'll do to survive. I think Benny would have understood. They say the mind bends and twists in order to deal with the horrors of life. I think my mind bent so much it snapped in two. When a platoon of GIs freed me two weeks later, they tried to take the helmet off. I killed four of them before they took me down. After that, they shipped me back to the States and put me in the asylum. But now I have a chance to get even with the man who pushed me over the edge and made Benny die. Violation of Midtown City Code 4432. Step out of your vehicle and surrender peacefully. Time's up. I'd done it. The battle was over. I'd won the contest. I went to see Calypso. Turns out he was a man of his word. He told me it was time for a reunion. After all these years, the advisor looked exactly the same. He didn't know who I was, but I recognized him. I'd been seeing his face in my nightmares for 30 years. Calypso had one more special prize for me. Dinner for one. 30 years is a long time to be locked away. You get kind of tired of asylum food. But after all this time, something new was on the menu. As much as I hated to admit it, over the years I developed a special craving. For human flesh. Doctors said it was some kind of amnesia. No one could figure out who I was or where I came from. There were some days I wondered if I actually existed at all. All we had to go on were the tattoos. Somehow, they were the key to the person I was. And from the looks of them, You'd think I was a nasty piece of work. I was beginning to think I'd never discover the truth. Then, the truth just kind of waltzes in through my door. Guy's name was Calypso. He ran this contest. He tells me he can clear everything up. I tell him to get lost before I break his freaking neck. But then he shows me this picture. Me, in a suit all nice and neat, like I was actually someone important. He said there was this whole life just waiting for me. All I had to do was win his contest. How could I refuse? Now I had a chance to get the answers I needed. Let's face it, who wants to spend the rest of their life as a nobody?
have been out for hours. At first there was just darkness, but then I started to see things, bad things. I remember now, I ran with this gang. At first we were small time, random beatings, robbery. We were nobodies. So we came up with a plan. The bomb was choice, freaking huge. When that building came down, who knew what kind of viruses and diseases would spread across the world? It was glorious, instant extinction. And finally, for the first time, we were important. We were feared. And that's it. The memories end there. I don't think I like the man I'm turning out to be. You're in violation of Midtown City Code 4432. Step out of your vehicle and surrender peacefully. Time's up. Test. Now it was time for the truth. I went to see Calypso. Hopefully he would know who I was. He did. Jesus. I was FBI. I'd been deep undercover for the last year trying to bust a doomsday cult in Midtown. Calypso said I was a hero. That night I rushed back into the building. I had to get that bomb as far away as I could, but there just wasn't time. So I took the quick way out. Explosion knocked me out. Now I remember. I am a hero. A hero undercover agent standing in front of number two on the FBI's 10 most wanted list. In other words, a dead man. Calypso thanked me for being such a great contestant. Then he said goodbye. I remember now. I have a family. God, I was just starting to remember. When the lights are low in this place, you get plenty of time for thinking. It beats the alternative, listening to the screams that come from every direction. It must have been years I was left alone in that darkness. But when you look like I do, it's probably for the best. My life was over, but the man who did this to me, to my face, he, he was still out there. But one day, I had a visitor. The guy's name was Calypso. He ran this freak show contest he wanted me to be a part of. If I entered and won, he said I'd taste the payback I'd been dreaming about. I just wanted to find the son of a bitch who destroyed my life. How could I refuse? always drugged up. I never thought about what happened to me, but now that I was out, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I was a boxer. You never heard of me. I was strictly small time. One night, I went up against this uh, hotshot fighter from out of state. I never even saw him coming. I got torn to pieces before the end of the first round. My jaw was shattered. My nose was broke. Uh, I was a mess. And some of the guys from the gym said they knew this surgeon who could fix me up, good as new. Well, maybe there were better doctors in town, but none that I could afford. 
Besides, I'd heard this guy was a big fan of the fights. Too bad old Doc made the mistake of betting on me that night. $20,000, McCutcheon. $20,000 I lost on you tonight. As I went under, all I could hear was the scraping sound of the Doc's blade and this blaring opera music he played while he worked. When I woke up, my face felt like it had gone 15 rounds with a semi-truck. The doc did a good job. I'll give him that. From what I hear, I went a little crazy. They say I busted up the hospital trying to find the guy. In the process, I tore up six innocent people. But now that I'm out, there ain't no place for the doc to hide. So what do you know? I was the winner. Calypso's contest was over and I was the champ. And true to his word, the man delivered the goods. I got my prize. He even had a special bonus lined up for me. It fit perfect, like we was meant to be together. I had seen fear in a man's eyes before, but this was different. This was special. I think that doctor, he knew payback was going to be brutal. It's funny, after all these years, I still got some snap in that left hook of mine. You know, that was the first time I ever knocked someone out with one punch. First time I knew I was different, I was just a little girl. There was this boy I really liked. One day, I finally got up the courage to tell him. He pushed me down in the mud. He called me ugly. I've been alone ever since, always waiting and hoping for that certain someone to come my way. I remember right after college, all my friends with their perfect boyfriends and their society weddings. Every time one of those bitches got hitched, I'd freak. Eventually, they had to put me on meds just to calm me down. But then one day, in the asylum, I had a visitor. The gentleman's name was Calypso. He said if I won his game, I'd never have to be alone again. He said he knew where I could find my true love. How could I refuse an offer like that? After all, no one as pretty as me deserves to be alone. I was asleep for hours, dreaming about weddings. In fact, one very special wedding. I was one of the bridesmaids as usual. My friend Kristen, she was the one getting married. Can you believe what she did? She actually had the nerve to throw the bouquet to me, that little bitch. Looking back, I'm not sure it was such a good idea to come off my medication. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. 
sorry. You're just an ugly fat cow. <laughs> I think that day, my heart just snapped in two. And I think my mind did the same. So I grabbed the closest thing I could find. And then I wasn't really sure what I did. If I wasn't going to have a man, then no one was. I dragged Kristen's fat, ugly body into one of the dressing rooms and bolted the door. Standing there in Kristen's dress, I realized I was the most beautiful bride I had ever seen. When I win this contest, Calypso will find me a man who thinks so too. I'm sure there were quite a few sour faces in town when all the girls learned I'd won the contest. I demanded my prize from Calypso. I wanted to meet my true love. Calypso delivered. It was my darling, my sweetheart, and he was gorgeous. Calypso told me he had to make a few modifications, but what man doesn't need a little adjusting here and there? As he held me in his big, strong arms, he leaned in to whisper something in my ear. To this day, I still can't believe what he said. I will never love you. My god, I was so close. But this wasn't my true love at all. He wasn't anything like the man I thought he was. Certainly not good enough for a girl like me. My Prince Charming is out there. I know he is, and I'll find him. Even if I have to go through each and every man, one at a time. I was a bad girl one time. And now I'm going to pay for what I did forever and ever and ever. I should have done what I was told. I should have been more careful. I shouldn't have defied Mr. Creel. That's why he did this to me. I'd been alone for so long. But then, one day, I had a visitor. His name was Calypso. He said he could make it all better. He said we were going to play a game. It was the key. The only one that could open my mask. Seven years I'd been locked away inside my doll face. If I won the contest, I'd get the key. But I've been so bad. I really deserve to be free? for hours, and the whole time, I was having this really scary dream. I dreamed about my boss, Mr. Creel, working on those creepy masks he used to make. It was my first real job after college. I didn't want to screw it up. I wanted Mr. Creel to like me. But then, this one day, I made a terrible mistake. I didn't mean to upset him. I didn't mean to be so clumsy. But I was just so stupid. I could feel the nails crushing the mask down on my face. And to make sure the mask stayed on tight, 
Mr. Creel made a weird looking key. He said it would make sure the mask would never come off. Now that I think about it, maybe it wasn't all my fault. gonna be free. I went to see Calypso. I told him I wanted my prize. But you know what? There's always a price to pay for something you really, really want. If I took the key, Mr. Creel was gonna die. Why couldn't he just have been nice to me? Now that I had the key, I didn't want it anymore. I like my new face now, much better than the old one. It doesn't cry and it doesn't look scared and it'll always be pretty, even when I'm old and gray inside. There's a whole lot of people in the world just like Mr. Creel. Someone has to show them that they can't do bad stuff to people like me. My parents put me in here. They think it was Kelly's death that sent me over the edge. They thought I'd gone nuts. But you know what the truth is? They're the ones who should have been put away. There are tons of kids just like me. It was a relief to finally meet someone who understood. His name was Calypso. He ran this contest. He said if I won, I could fulfill Kelly's dying wish. I could avenge her death. So I told him I'd play his stupid game. Kelly was my best friend in the world. I would have died for her. Who knows, maybe if I'm lucky, I'll get the chance. Unconscious is like being in a pitch black room with no doors, no lights, and no way out. I could have stayed in that place forever. But then, the dreams began. Kelly and I were on the pier. School had just let out. We were using our tarot cards, trying to find out if this boy Kelly liked would ever notice her. It was a really bad reading. I guess if I ever needed proof that the cards actually worked, that was the day I got it. They were some jerk-off guys from school. They called us witches. One guy grabbed me, another went after Kelly. He said he'd always wanted to see if a witch could swim. I kept screaming at him, she can't swim, Kelly can't swim. <laughs> I didn't know how to swim either. There was nothing I could do. They didn't stick around to help. As Kelly went under, I heard her shouting to me. You get them, she said. You make them pay for this. And then I didn't hear her anymore. I've waited five months for this chance. Kelly trusted me with her last request. I promise I'll deliver. That's what best friends are for.
I'd won Calypso's stupid game. He said it was time to claim my prize. It was time for Kelly to get her revenge. I didn't know what Calypso was getting at at first, but then I began to see revenge this way. It's what Kelly would have wanted more than anything in the world. An eye for an eye, blood for blood. It was the coat of the witch. It's weird. As I pushed that first pin down, I felt something give. It was like pushing into a person. And from far away, I could have sworn I heard someone screaming. It took two days for the cops to find the bodies. When they got there, well, let's just say it wasn't a very pretty sight. I've kept the voodoo dolls in case I ever run into my parents again. I know I won't see Kelly anytime soon, but I often feel like she's with me, protecting me. People may come and go, they live, and they die. But a true friend is forever. Three months in the nut house. It was the longest I'd ever been confined. So a few people had been killed. It wasn't my fault. Please! No! I got a family! Shut Please. up and no. bleed, you motherfucker. Well, maybe it was my fault. But I had my own problems to worry about. The old man's curse was beginning to piss me off. But then one day, he showed up. Calypso, he called himself. It was a stupid name. I wanted to kill him there and then, but he made me an offer. He said he ran some kind of crazy contest. If I won his game, he promised to show me how to bring an end to the curse. No more headaches. As much as I had those old urges of mine, I kept them to myself for the moment. I figured I'd play along with his little game. After all, I could always kill him later. screaming out like the freak he was. He asked God to curse me, to burden me forever with the flames of hell. It took me less than a minute to kill three police officers and get my mask back on. I never used to believe in curses, but it's been three months since that night. And the pain gets worse every day. So let me tell you something, boys and girls. I sure as hell believe in curses now. You're in violation of Midtown City. 
Last year, everything was perfect. My dad drove this cab. He used to take me with him sometimes. I have a brother, but my dad won't let me talk about him. He says my brother became really, really bad when he started driving this ice cream truck. Me and my dad, we were like best friends. But one night, there was this passenger. He had this gun. He killed my dad and then ran. I just sat there while my dad died. But then, I had this idea. I was able to put together this controller. It made my dad alive again. I control him now. People think it's weird. They don't like it. They want to put me in a home and bury my dad. But I don't want him to leave me. I don't want to be alone. That's why I entered this contest. When I win this game, Calypso promises he'll make everything all better. won the contest. I went to Calypso and asked for my prize. He promised that he'd make everything all better. It was a trick. He destroyed my controller. It killed my dad. I begged my dad to come back. I even tried to put the controller back together. But Calypso wouldn't let me. He said things in time would be all better. He said he needed someone to train to take over his contest when he died. He said my brother would have been the perfect choice, but since I killed him, I was the next best thing. He said it was in my blood. I went to Calypso and demanded my prize. 
I wanted to know who killed my wife. And I wanted revenge. It was him. That freak in the ice cream truck. He was always around the neighborhood. Why hadn't I been more careful? I should have said something was wrong. It was my fault. Maybe I was really the one to blame for my wife's death. But then... He spoke to me. Your wife... She didn't die easy. You should know. She begged for you as I killed her. The clown is dead. But so is my wife. I will never be free. Trademark. When I killed, everyone would know it was me. Midtown was scared of that clown freak. <laughs> I'll show them something they'll never forget. Time's up! 